Hey guys, today I want to present a solution to the China Team Selection Test 2024 Problem 4. At first, let's have a look on the problem statement. We are given a square free positive integer n and a subset s of the integers from 1 to n. Moreover, the cardinality of s is greater than or equal to n divided by 2. Now our task is to prove that we can find a, b and c in s such that a times b is congruent to c modulo n. First of all, I want to note that if n is an element of s, then we can just choose a to be equal to b equal c equal n to get this, this equation here is true. So from now on, we can assume that n is not an element of s. To get a first intuition for the problem, we want to consider the case that n is equal to p a prime number. A reason why this is a good first step is that congruences modulo a prime number are easy to handle because we can do division. In this case, let's start by taking an element a out of s and consider the product a times b where this a is fixed and b is an arbitrary value out of s. Taking b and b prime from our set s such that b times a is congruent to b prime times a modulo n. We can divide by a because we know that n is not an element of s, so a is not equal to n, to get that b is congruent to b prime and since they are in a set 1 to n, we know that b equals b prime. This implies that if we consider the set of all residue classes of a times b modulo n, where b should be an element of s, we know that the magnitude of this set here should be equal to the magnitude of s. Moreover, since all of the elements in s are not congruent to 0, we also know that in this set the residue class 0 is not contained. Therefore, since the size of s is greater than or equal to n over 2 or greater than n minus 1 divided by 2, we can conclude that there is a value in this set which is also contained in s. Taking c to be equal to this value gives us the desired result and therefore we are done in this case. Now we are ready to deal with the general case. And here we want to try to use this idea. The key step in this argumentation here was that from b times a congruent to b prime times a, we can follow that b equals b prime. And we want to try to do the same now. Unfortunately, this is not always possible in the general case, but we can at first restrict ourselves to the set A, which only contains the numbers co prime to n. We get a similar result as above, namely, if we have A in A and also B in B prime in A such that B times A is congruent to B prime times A modulo n, then we can conclude that B is equal to B prime. Of course, we are interested in the set S. Therefore, we want to define A S to be equal to a intersected with s. Let's again take a look at the set of residue classes of a times b modulo n, where we want to be b in a s, and a should be a fixed value in a s. We know that the cardinality of this set is equal to the cardinality of a s. Here I want to note that since both a and b are co-prime to n, we also know that a times b is co-prime to n. Therefore, this set here on the left-hand side is a subset of our set a. Hence, if we get that this cardinality here is greater than half of the cardinality of a, then we are done. We have now split up our set s into two sets, the good set a and the rest. And now let's try to deal with the rest. To do this, we want to partition the other numbers into smaller subsets, such that for each subset, these two properties here are true. Namely, we want to define the set AD containing all x from the set 1 to n, such that the greatest common divisor of x and n is equal to d. Since we know that x is exactly in the set AGCD of x and n, this here is indeed a partition. We define ADS to be the intersection of AD and S to get a partition of S into ADS. Therefore, we know that one of the sets ADS 
has at least half of the elements of the set AD. Together with the fact that the set A and S, which is just N intersected with S, is the empty set, we get that we can find a divisor D of N such that the magnitude of A ds is greater than the magnitude of AD divided by 2. So it is left to check that these two properties here are also satisfied for our sets AD. Firstly, let's take a look at this property here. We want A to be in ADS and we want B and B prime in AD. The condition that B times A congruent B prime times A modulo N also tells us that this congruency here is true modulo N divided by D. Moreover, since A is co prime to N divided by D, we get that B congruent to B prime modulo N divided by D. Therefore, this implies that n divided by d divides b prime minus b. Moreover, since both b and b prime are chosen from the set a d, we know that d also divides b prime minus b. Now, the fact that n is square free tells us that n divided by d and d are co prime. Therefore, these two divisibility conditions here tells us that n divides b prime minus b, and therefore this is true. For the second property, let's consider this set here, where b is an element of a d s. We know that a times b is divisible by d. And we also know that a times b is co-prime to n divided by d because n is square free. Therefore, this set here is again indeed a subset of a d. We have that the size of this set here is equal to the size of a d s. And now, if we have that this size is greater than the size of a d divided by 2, then we are done. But we already know that we can find a value for d such that this inequality is true and therefore we are done.